Today, the coronavirus outbreak spirals out of control in the United States, with just one week left till election day. Plus, the work from home life is nowhere close to being over. We explain how it's affecting workers. And finally, AMD is kind of a big deal when it comes to cutting edge computer chips, and it's getting even bigger. I'm Mackenzie Segalos, and this is CNBC After Hours. Let's take a look at what's rising and falling on Wall Street. The Dow and S&P 500 both ended the day lower, as the United States struggles to get a handle on the latest series of coronavirus outbreaks. The tech-heavy Nasdaq, on the other hand, rose slightly, as investors poured back into the so-called stay-at-home stocks. Shopify rose more than 4%, and Amazon rose about 2.5%. That's an online shopping trade. Meanwhile, video conferencing company Zoom rose 4% and Microsoft rose 1.5%. That's a work from home trade. Microsoft also just reported its first quarter earnings and the tech company recorded big growth in its cloud computing business. We're talking 48% revenue growth, which was slightly higher than the previous quarter. More and more companies are turning to businesses like Microsoft as the cloud becomes central to remote work. So what is that saying about the outlook on coronavirus cases in the United States? Well, it's saying that we're in for a long winter. On Monday, the U.S. hit a daily record of 69,967 cases based on a seven day average. That's according to a CNBC analysis of data from Johns Hopkins. It's a 20 percent increase compared to a week ago. Where are we seeing all these new cases? All over. 15 states hit record highs in average current hospitalizations, with states like Wyoming and New Mexico seeing weekly increases of close to 50 percent. OK, let's get to our sound check. Here's a roundup of the day's biggest action and what the top newsmakers and business leaders had to say on CNBC's airwaves. It certainly would not be a surprise to see uh, to see greater volatility heading up to the election and the weeks and months afterward. So we've been uh, we've been investing more in terms of making sure our processes are um, are really solid, and we're taking a look at things like like margin and margin requirements for for different securities. We are, we're also continuing to invest in the scalability and reliability and redundancy of our systems. Ultimately, America has a controversy addiction. We are all clicking and retweeting and liking and sharing this, this content, and these foreign actors are happy to provide a steady stream of that. And so one of the challenges that these platforms are now facing is how do you separate the dynamics that allow the mis- and disinformation from spreading from those dynamics that are core to the existence of the platform. What Xilinx brings is, you know, really very additive um, to the AMD model. So, uh, you know, first of all, it is immediately accretive um, upon closing. You know, it brings, um, you know, significant margin expansion as well as uh, profitability and free cash flow generation. But more importantly than that, um, we really believe that together we can define the future of high performance computing. The games have been fantastic. Quality of the games, both during the regular season and the postseason, have been fantastic. Uh, I think fan support, as evidenced uh, by the thousand cars we have every night in uh, in LA, and local ratings have been extraordinary. Our ratings this year were double what they've been in the past. So local ratings continue to be strong. The After Hours team here at CNBC has been mostly working remotely since March 13th. This is episode number 61 from my home office, and we're definitely not alone. Non-essential workers across the country have set up shop from their dining room tables and kitchens and couches for most of 2020. And one study shows that all of this virtual work has actually been pretty great for employees. Stress, negative emotions, and task-related conflict, well, they're all down at least 10%. 
So does the workforce actually lose anything by ditching the office for an extended period of time or even forever? Ethan Bernstein is a professor of organizational behavior at Harvard Business School. Bernstein co-authored this study and he sat down with us to break down the findings. So in the article we published over the summer in HBR in The Big Idea, we drew upon a diverse set of employees in the United States who've all been working from home since March. And what's unique perhaps about our approach, we've actually been asking them questions, the same questions every two weeks since March. So we get a longitudinal view in a way that research often doesn't. Um, and we found, if I were to try and summarize the results very quickly, three curves the sort of we can do it curve. So on one, of the, on one set of dimensions, people are just getting better and better at what they're doing at home. And that, that has implications for lower task conflict, lower negative emotions, lower stress. That has been progressively getting better and better. And the article in July was based on data through the end of May, but we've seen those trends continue. There was another curve, the sort of good old V-shaped curve on things like job engagement and job satisfaction. We saw those things dip and then come back and recover pretty much to where they were before. And, and that has remained true. And then perhaps the third seemingly boring, but to me very interesting curve is the flat line. So there were an, a, several dimensions, including self perceptions of performance that just stayed flat. Now that came at a cost. Um, we also saw initially and continue to see people working longer hours, 10 to 20% initially, and I think that's come down a little bit, but still hasn't, really hasn't centered back to where people were before. And people with children fared worse, um, although people with spouses fared better. And we found that on average, people were talking more, communicating more, interacting more with the people with whom they have strong ties, so the people that were sort of close-knit with us. But all those individuals that we get a lot of good information from by having one-off conversations with, those weak ties had dropped by at least 10%, maybe more. Much of the work has suggested there are certain things we get from our weak ties that are extremely important. So for example, if you were searching for a job, conceivably that job wouldn't come necessarily from a person you were close with because if you were close with that person, you probably worked with them or have worked with them recently as opposed to somebody who happens to know about a job posting out there and the weak tie brings you that information about that posting that just happens to be right for you. So yes, weak ties can be extremely important. Just because they're weak doesn't mean they're not important. There are definitely tasks, functions, types of work that are harder today at home than they were in the office. And we identify three, fostering relationships among employees, onboarding new employees, and helping to cultivate weak ties. And all three of those things you'll notice have something in common. It's the ability to have that quote unquote water cooler conversation um, and that the digital water cooler is just not quite living up. Okay, time for today's numbers round. First up is 35 billion. It was a big morning for chip maker AMD. The company reported way better than expected quarterly results. Oh, and it also announced today that it's buying rival Xilinx in a $35 billion all stock deal. Now we heard from AMD CEO a little while ago during our sound check segment, but we have a few more details for you about that purchase. The move comes as part of AMD's push into the fast growing business of data centers. Now these help power internet based applications and are fueling the rise of AI and 5G telecom networks. It's also a move sure to intensify AMD's ongoing battle with Intel. Next is 15. Just in time for the holiday season, KFC is offering a fried chicken scented fire log. Yes, you heard that right. It'll set you back about $15 and is sold exclusively at Walmart. Now, this is actually the third year that KFC is offering its fire log. It debuted back in 2018, but it's the first time that chicken lovers will be able to buy it in store. The so-called 11 herbs and spices fire log is only available for a limited time. And finally, 99. Elon Musk's SpaceX is pricing its high-speed Starlink satellite internet service at $99 per month. That's according to screenshots of an email seen by CNBC's space industry reporter Michael Sheets. Now, this is all part of a beta test that the company is expanding to more users. Reminder, 
Starlink is a satellite constellation that SpaceX has been trying to build in Earth's orbit. The company has launched 900 satellites so far, and that's nowhere near what it needs for global coverage. We're talking thousands more satellites for the network to beam high-speed internet to anywhere on the planet. Now, earlier in October, it's worth noting that SpaceX announced a deal to connect Microsoft's cloud computing network to Starlink. SpaceX says Starlink could bring in close to $30 billion in revenue a year, which is way more than what it makes on its reusable rocket business. That's it for After Hours, but before we go, here's one more thing to keep an eye on. Big tech CEOs are heading to Capitol Hill to face lawmakers over their increasing power in the lives of everyday Americans. Does that sound familiar? Well, that's because it happened back in July, and it's happening again tomorrow. Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg and Google's Sundar Pichai returned to DC on Wednesday to defend the law that underpins their business models. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey is going to be there this time as well. Now, for the rest of October, we'll be right here in our home office every Tuesday and Thursday with a new edition of After Hours, so be sure to catch us later this week.